We here at the United Nations uh, have great hopes for this project. Active engagement, like we see here tonight, of all members of society is one of the keys to successful po poverty eradication strategies. Now, what we're going to do tonight is launch a global event, and you've heard, these films will reach an audience across the world of half a billion people. Today we are here to celebrate eight films that we believe can touch people through their honesty and exploration. I'm proudest of our filmmakers. I have a kind of awe at what they've accomplished. As I watch these films again and again and again, I'm startled, and I think you will be. Every one of the eight powerful documentaries will affect you. Tonight, we can start a global conversation by asking the question, why? something we want to show to the world, to the developing world, that it can be done. These eight documentaries are going to set a standard, I think, in terms of storytelling. And as I like to say, that when we open people's heart, we often open their minds. Giving women equal opportunities and equal rights is going to change uh, the world. The basic principles of gender equality, equal rights to men and women, are so fundamental that we should stand firm on it. When I was looking at this and thinking, what would I list as some of the greatest um, challenges we have? Why poverty? I mean, certainly governments delivering on their responsibilities is a major one. We are wealthy, yet we are poor. The mines was the last great resource that the state held. The Zambia made a decision that the country was in such a desperate situation with its very high debt for the mines to be privatized. The bank's assumption was that if you can attract foreign investment, eventually the benefits will trickle down. The challenge is this. Do you have a resource at hand? Yes, we have. Do you have the resources to exploit that resource? No, we don't have. It's a chicken and egg situation. Was it not Mahatma Gandhi who said there is enough for everybody's need but not for everybody's greed. And Africa's case, and certainly Zambia's case, is a good example of greed. A lot of that has just got to do with straightforward governance and accountability. Sometimes it's easy to demonize these countries uh, and talk about transparency when you don't even see it in Western countries, the transparency that created the global crisis. Where is the transparency about that? Hungry and angry, another food riot breaks out on the streets in Algeria. The world food crisis is growing. For the millions of people around the world struggling to buy the most basic of foodstuffs, these are desperate times. Rich countries are racing to buy and lease agricultural land abroad and secure their food supplies for the future. Africa, known for its fertile land and low-priced agricultural real estate, has become the target of wealthy investors. And if we have taken anything from tonight, it is that indifference to the plight of our fellow human beings simply isn't an option. 